Hey everybody, Chris Grandy, planwithchris.com, chrisgrandy.com. Today's core question is, when would you not want to max out your traditional or Roth IRA or other qualified accounts? I think that's how I understood the question, by the way. I wasn't sure if they were asking that or something else, but I'm going to answer it as if that was the question. When are the times you do not want to max out your IRA and 401k? Now, this is assuming that you can. So, of course, if you don't have the free cash flow, that's a, a duh, obvious reason you're not going to max out the 401k and you know, not leaving yourself enough cash to live on. Obviously, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you have the opportunity and the choice to go either way. You can max out the 401k and you could also do a traditional IRA and or Roth mix or both, either, whatever one. Why would you not want to max each of those out? Well, first off, I'll answer this. When it comes to the Roth, I think there are very few times and cases, and I can't think any off the top of my head, where I would not want to max out a Roth IRA. Um, I think if I had the cash flow, but uh, no emergency fund, even then for young people, because you can withdraw principal from a Roth IRA without penalty, even then I would not be 100% 100 say no on it. But for the most part, there's very, very few reasons that I probably could research and come up with why you would not want to max out a Roth IRA. But there are definitely some reasons and planning strategies behind not maxing out your 401k or, um, or traditional IRA. Okay, and I'm going to list four of them. There are tons of them. I mean, we can, you know, planning scenarios, depending on how unique your situation is or what's going on in your life, can go on all over the place. But let's look at these four scenarios. First off, if you think you'll be in a higher tax bracket later on, so I mean, some people, they're stashing so much money that they'll actually put themselves in a potential situation where they're in a higher tax bracket later on in retirement, especially if there's a chance that the tax brackets will be higher. So if you are, um, you know, you may, you may actually may have more retirement income than you have work income now, or maybe later on by doing some planning, you realize, well, right now you've got mortgage payments, et cetera. When you retire, you'll have no um, fewer deductions and maybe the same or more income, you know, with pension and 401k required minimum distributions or IRA minimum required minimum distributions that you're actually paying a higher tax rate and more taxes in that situation you may want to do some advanced planning and blend out your retirement accounts by between Roth, non-taxable, you know, qualified money, AKA IRAs and 401ks and non-qualified type of accounts, just like having a brokerage account with, with uh, stock funds or something. So that's one reason where you may be in a higher tax bracket later on and be paying higher taxes. And again, that would come in for middle-class people. That may be people who uh, have a, a very high pension, like a, you know, like a certain uh, government workers who have an 80% pension. And if at the same time they were stuffing their 403B and stuffing their 457 plan, and then all of a sudden, you know, they have RMDs and, and they're just in a higher tax bracket. So then, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe the Roth account or something else is, is better than getting the tax deduction right now. So that's one. Uh, number two, another reason is if you do your planning out, realize that even if your income's not higher, it's high enough that you could knock yourself out from certain deductions, cause yourself to get certain surcharges, and also um, um, certain penalties or, or, or increased taxes. What do I mean? Well, let me give you three examples of where this might happen. If your income is, is above a certain amount, they start taxing your social security benefits. In other words, like if you, um, the magic number for single people is 25,000. It's not inflation adjusted. I think they put the number in in 1986 in the tax act. Never inflation adjusted it. By the way, that's how politicians justify tax changes because if you don't inflation adjust something, you start pinching more people down the line. So it's a trick. It's a political trick. Worked great. 25000 was a lot of money in 1986. It's nothing now. But just to start off, 25000 is the magic amount. If your modified adjusted gross income is above 25000 you start adding Social Security benefits to your, to your 1040. So in other words, if it's below 25000 your whole Social Security check is tax-free. Above $25,000, we have got to take some of that Social Security and start adding it to your taxable income and paying tax on it. So that's one way where higher income later on, and that would affect you know more lower income people because 25 is 
is pretty low, but that's one way area where, um, but also to higher income, if you planned your income out, you know, using non-qualified annuities where the income coming to you would be a lot of cost basis in the calculations, not income, taxed income. You, you know, I've seen some people with some decent retirement incomes. I've put plans together where they've avoided taxes tremendously uh, because of things like the annuity rules and stuff, but that's a, that's a whole nother uh, topic. But Social Security taxation, income's too high, it starts getting taxed. Another thing is, is if your income, if you're a single person and your income is over 85,000 with another modified adjusted gross income formula, you start getting surcharged on your Medicare premiums. And that goes up too. So there are a few brackets there where um, you start paying more. See, I think your Medicare premiums can go up to over over four hundred dollars a month if you make too much, way too much money. Again, that's that's a solid amount, but it starts off at eighty five thousand for singles. And one more area where um, having higher income can hurt you is with the deductibility for medical expenses. There's a ten percent, um, um, you know, level. You've got to get your medical expenses have to be greater than ten. You know, hurdle rate has to be, have to be greater than ten percent to deduct those expenses. 10% of your adjusted gross income. So the higher your income is, the higher that 10% hurdle is and the less of a chance you can deduct medical expenses. And later on as a retiree, you may have more medical expenses and, uh, and could use that tax deduction. And in that situation, you know, so if you factor all these into planning, you can see if maybe later on you're in a situation where, uh, you know, you, you're, um, you may be better off not having so much um, money in a 401k because later on it's going to come out and you'll be paying taxes on it and it may be causing you to get hit with these surcharges, penalties, and loss of deductions. Um, third area is flexibility. You may want cash for your personal VC fund. Did a cool uh, video article on that. I'll link below. You know, having your own fund available for something that might, opportunity that might pop up you want to be ready for. So emergency funds, buying a house, real estate, investment, you know, anything, any, any kind of opportunity, if you lock the money in a 401k or an IRA and it can only come out with a penalty, not the best source of funds for, you know, for investments. So uh, you may have other plans. And that's another reason you may not want to max out your 401k plan. All right. And, you know, you got to say that, you know, for some people, you get real estate at the right price. That's, there's, there's almost oftentimes nothing better for retirement planning than a, a really quality piece of real estate. Um, last, one of the last, the last area I'll talk about in this video, again, these are four areas I'm talking about, and there are more, but I'm covering four, is for small business, say, S-Corp owners. Some business owners, in order to increase the contributions to their 401k plan, would have to increase their salary, their salary versus their um, S-Corp dividends. For those of you that know are in business, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't have an S-Corp or a small business, you can just skip this section, but in order to deduct more money, you may need to claim a higher income. Well, when you claim a higher income, you pay higher FICA taxes. And so therefore, um, if you're paying FICA taxes and income taxes, that may not look as appealing, all right, as just taking that, in, taking that as, as corporate dividend income and just paying income taxes. So if you, let's say you have this pool of $100,000 and you currently take $50,000 salary, the other 50,000 you leave in the business, for growth or you know occasional needs, if you, let's say you want to contribute ten thousand dollars more to your four hundred one k, so you increase your salary to sixty thousand, you now have to pay FICA tax on that ten thousand dollars, another fifteen plus percent taxes. All right. Whereas if you just left it in the corporation, uh, you would you would pay income tax on it, but not FICA. Okay, so. Over here on this side of salary, you pay FICA tax on it. And then later on, when you take it out of the 401k, you're going to pay income tax on it. So you're going to pay probably twice the tax rate. Whereas over here, if you kept that money on the business side, you know, you did not increase your salary in order to increase the, the, the contribution. You kept your salary the same and just kept that income on the side and paid taxes on it. You just pay income tax on it. And then, you know, then you go, but so maybe you buy an index fund with it and never sell that index fund. And it's the same as a tax deferred growth. So anyway, uh, those are the four reasons. All right, higher tax, higher tax rates later on, higher taxable income. All right, loss of deductions on um, medical expenses, surcharges on your Medicare, and um, and and Social Security taxation is number two, kind of the retirement uh, whammy, whammos where you get hit with these 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 gotchas you weren't expecting. Number three is uh, financial flexibility. You have things you want to do, things you want to buy, investments you want to make. You want to you don't want that cash stuck in a four hundred one k where there's a penalty. And lastly, for small, small business owners, S-Corp owners, uh, where 
where increasing 401k contributions or such would likely mean having to increase the salary, which means having to increase having to increase your FICA tax. So on, on that salary money, you're paying FICA tax now and income tax later when you withdraw it. Whereas on the other side, if it is uh, you know on on that money and the growth. Whereas on the other side, if you just left it as um, corporate profits, then you just pay income tax on it, but not FICA tax. And so the tax benefit there, you have to weigh in. Maybe you may be better off not putting that money in a 401k, not claiming it as salary first and, and paying the FICA tax. So anyway, there's some reasons. Hopefully that's helpful to you. There are many more when I mean, it comes to, and this folks is like, there's a lot of other core questions I get is like, you know, what is financial planning? This is what planning is, okay? It's not, how do I allocate my portfolio, 60% stock? I mean, that is the most like mindless thing. This is the kind of planning stuff, just part of it that you have to think about uh, later on because it's really all about your retirement security and how much money you get to actually take home and spend. It's about living. You know, it's about the things you want to do, the goals. And, and you have to think about living and you need income to live and you want to maximize that income because once you stop working, that's it. And so you want to make sure it goes, it goes in a place that makes the most sense. You want to make sure when you withdraw it, you withdraw it most sensibly. And, uh, and this is the kind of stuff you do when you're doing advanced planning and thinking about things ahead of time. So just to give you an idea, any questions, drop them below, like the video, then like it. If you want to subscribe and, uh, and hear some more stuff, uh, would love to share some more ideas with you and would love to have you. So thanks again for watching and have a great day.